Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Andy Howard. I'm an applications engineer with Agilent Technologies, and I'm going to talk about uh, various load pool simulation uh, techniques uh, within uh, ADS. Uh, this is an outline of my talk. First, I'm going to talk about uh, what load pool is and why do it uh, very briefly. Then I'll talk about uh, working with measured load pool data and how you can use it to design uh, impedance matching networks. And next I'll talk about uh, simulating load pull on nonlinear device models. And this could include X parameters and uh, how we can do this, use this sort of simulation to determine optimal source and load impedances. Okay, first I'll talk about what load pull is and why do it. If you're designing a, a power amplifier, you're probably using a, a nonlinear device, a, a FET, for example. And a, a big part of the design process is determining what impedances to present to the output as the load and the input as the source at the fundamental uh, second and third harmonics uh, for the load and also at the fundamental second and third harmonics for the source. And the performance that you get from the device really varies substantially with the load that you present to it. And by performance, I mean things like output power, uh, intermodulation distortion, gain, uh, power added efficiency, ACPR, air vector magnitude, things like that. Now, once you've gone through the process of determining what these optimal impedances need to be, uh, and you've designed your input and output matching networks, you have a completed amplifier but when you did this design, you made an assumption about what the external load impedance is. It, you, you maybe you assume that it's, say, 50 ohms broadband, and maybe you assume that the source is 50 ohms broadband. Or maybe you assume that it's the input impedance of the next stage, for example. And what you can do is a sensitivity check would be to, to see how the performance varies as you change the, the load, the external load. And that kind of indicates the sensitivity of your design to external load conditions. OK, there are two main ways of dealing with load pull or, or running load pull simulations or, or dealing with nonlinear devices. I, I would say that in, in one case, you have only measured load pull data for the device that you're using. And the other case, maybe you have a nonlinear device model. Okay, the first section I will talk about is where you just have measured load pool data. This is a sample measured load pool data from uh, Maori, and it has typically data that's a function of frequency, uh, bias conditions, uh, input power, and there's various data that's in the file. It could be output power, gain, power added efficiency, could be intermodulation distortion, could be ACPR, things like that. What we'd like to know is what's the optimal load to present to this device to get the best performance from it? And what we'd like to know what performance we can get from it as well. One thing that you can do if you're just given the file from somebody, say from a, a a PA vendor or, or a device vendor, you can use ADS. Whoops, you can use ADS. The um, whoops, uh, you can use this component, this database load pool component, which is new to ADS 2011, to uh, to read in the data file and, and and look at the contours with the ADS data display. If you already know from the vendor what the optimal load is, then there's, there's no reason to, to go through this. But if, if you, you want to examine the file and look at contours, you can, you can do that. OK, this, is, this component reads in the, the load pool data file, and it simulates the impedance or the reflection coefficient seen by this node. And then it gets the data that correspond to that reflection coefficient and out exports that as the simulation result. And what I'm doing here is I, I have a, a load pull tuner, and we can specify some region of the Smith chart, in this case a rectangular region, 
and sweep out a rectangular region, present that to this uh, component, and get the corresponding data. And typically, the, you'd want this tuner to, to specify a region of the Smith chart that corresponds to the data in the file. This is what's in the file, in the uh, load pool file. Uh, we can see what the, the um, reflection coefficient ranges are. And we can see what the swept frequency and input power values are. And in this case, this is a very simple example where we just have a single frequency and a single input power. And then we can look at different uh, performances from the, uh, the load pool data. And th these include the efficiency, the transducer power gain, and uh, the power delivered, although you can certainly look at other data. This shows the, the contours from a, a, a simulation. And in red, we have the efficiency. Blue is the power out. And uh, purple is the transducer power gain. This shows the, the contours for those three on a rectangular impedance chart and the same data on a Smith chart. This is a more realistic example where I have a, a, a more uh, or a higher power device and we have a, uh, the, the file actually has a, a sweep of the available source power. And in this case, it's swept from 20 to 37 dBm. And we're going to look at the load pull contours at each one of these available source powers and uh, in, in the, the region of reflection coefficients that are in the file. So these values for the SMAG min, SMAG max, S real min, and S real max are specified based on the data that's in the file. And because we're doing a power sweep, we can look at contours at a particular level of gain compression. This shows the contours for efficiency, gain, and output power at the 1 dB gain compression point. Uh, the, the red is for efficiency, blue is gain, and uh, uh, purple is uh, output power. And the cont contours look a little bit strange because uh, not all the data in the file is realistic. Some of it is noisy or irregular or for cer certain points, certain loads, and certain input power levels, uh, valid data was not obtained. So that's why s some of the contours look a little bit strange, some of the, the particular points. This is a, a different way of looking at the data. I'm plotting on the y-axis uh, power delivered versus power added efficiency. And we can select one of these points using this, this marker. Uh, in this case, we've chosen a point for higher efficiency. Uh, again, this data is all at the 1 dB compression point. And this uh, point that we've selected between power delivered and power added efficiency is corresponds to this load in the uh, Smith chart, or on the Smith chart. And this is a, a 4 ohm Smith chart. And if we choose this load and sweep the power, this red trace corresponds to the data uh, over all power levels. Then the data in the, in the red box over here corresponds to this particular load. Uh, this this uh, uh, data point, which is this load. Okay, here we've chosen a, a load that is higher output power. Still, again, it's the 1 dB compression point. Uh, it's 1 dB compression point data. All the contours are at 1 dB uh, gain compression. And we see uh, a, a different result. You can see that the output power is higher. That's on the uh, x-axis. So if we go back, you can see that there's a, there's a trade-off. We're, we're at higher power but slightly lower efficiency. We can also look at the contours at a particular input power level. These are the input powers. We can select one of them that we uh, measure or simulated, and we can plot the contours for efficiency, gain, uh, output, power, uh, output power, and uh, gain compression. OK, once we've examined the contours and we've decided what the optimal load impedances are that we want to generate, the next step in the process would be to design impedance matching networks. And you can use existing techniques, or you can, do, you can actually use the measured data in an optimization. And here I'm showing a very simple 
impedance matching network, but we can optimize the, these component values uh, across frequency, for example, and use data from the files such as efficiency, uh, gain, gain compression, power added, uh, uh, maybe distortion, just depending upon what's in here, we can use that data as part of the optimization process. Okay, and this shows the results of the optimization. Okay, and, and naturally the results that you actually get for your performances and for your values will depend on how you define the goals in, in your optimization. Okay, this is a, a, the last section, and it's on uh, simulating load pull where you have a nonlinear device model. And this could include X parameters. Okay, if you have a nonlinear device model, you have a little bit more flexibility in, in what you can simulate and what you can do with, with uh, load pulls. Uh, this is a, a sequence for running load pool simulations. You could certainly use different sequences, but this is just one that uh, I, I think is a, a reasonable uh, approach. But you could start off with a, a one-tone, one-input power load pool. This is the fastest simulation because it doesn't include any sweeps other than of the load. And then you could add a, a power sweep to see gain compression, which is an important specification, which uh, almost everyone is, is concerned about. You could add a, a frequency or a bias sweep and see how you're, if, generally if you're designing a power amplifier across a band of frequencies, you need to consider the performance at other frequencies than just the, the center frequency uh, or the, a single frequency, for example. And I'll, I'll show a little bit about this. The performance of your PA will, or, and, your, uh, and of your device will vary with the reflection coefficient at the harmonic frequencies and you can uh, specify, we, we can run a, a harmonic load phase sweep. We can run a, a constant pow output power uh, load pull. This is where we, we can do an optimization of the power delivered to the load at each, as we, ver as we sweep the load, we can optimize the power delivered so that all the contours correspond to the specific power that we want delivered to the load. We can run a source pull if, if desired. We can do a, a two-tone intermodulation distortion simulation. We can also use modulated signals to see uh, ACLR or EVM. And, and we can also get EVM data from one-tone swept harmonic balance power simulations. And certainly you could uh, change this uh, uh, technique or, or change this sequence, delete steps, or iterate. This is the, the simplest setup. Uh, I have a, a, a tuner, or a load pull instrument, which, which has a tuner that allows you to sweep the load in either a circular or a rectangular region of the Smith chart, and you can specify the, the loads at the fundamental and harmonic frequencies to be independent of each other. And you can sweep the load at the, the fundamental or at one of the harmonic frequencies. Okay, from the simulation, the, the first simulation, we, we assume a, 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 we fix the available source power, we guess the optimal source impedance, and we make guesses at the, the impedances at the harmonic frequencies, and we run a load pull in, in a, you could say run a large region of the Smith chart. And what this tells us is, uh, looking at the contours, we can see that the, the optimal region is over here, uh, and we can refine the region of the Smith chart that we're, we're simulating over. But we really don't know anything about the amount of gain compression unless we uh, manually step the source power. And this does indicate that the gain compression is occurring. If we add a power sweep, then we can see gain compression data. This setup is the same as before, except that instead of a single available source power, we're now sweeping the available source power. And we can see uh, gain compression data. This is, again, okay, we're looking at the performance at a single available source power, 14 dBm, and we're selecting a particular uh, point between power delivered and power added efficiency. So we're making a trade-off between the two. Typically, you, you choose a point kind of along this arc, and this is the load that corresponds to this point. This data all corresponds to this point as well, and um, this point, uh, corresponds to the, this load as well. The, the red is the 
the uh, transducer power gain and power added efficiency that you get if we use that load for all uh, input powers. Okay, this is the same data, but now we're looking at performance at 20 dBm available source power. And we've chosen a, a slightly different load. We get better performance at higher output power, but the performance at lower output power is worse. So you can see that there's a, a definite trade-off in the power added efficiency here. And it, you're going to get different results if you match for a lower input power than if you match for, say, a higher uh, input power. This shows the contours at uh, 30 dBm output power. These are all interpolated data. Uh, this is uh, a, a transducer power gain and gain compression. This is, these are the power added efficiency contours. This is the same data, but just on a, an impedance chart. And you can specify the uh, desired output power for the contours. Uh, this shows the loads for maximum power added efficiency and minimum gain compression. Um, so there's a, about 30 percentage points difference in the power added efficiency, but the output power is exactly the same, about 30 dBm. From the same uh, simulation results, we can look at the xdB gain compression data. These are the contours at the 1 dB gain compression point for efficiency, gain, and power delivered. And this is where we've picked a load for the uh, highest power delivered, about that point. And this is where we've picked a load for the uh, a higher power added efficiency, or about here. So you could choose something in between those two if, if, if you prefer. It's possible to run a, a frequency or a bias sweep. In this case, I'm showing contours at, uh, for power delivered at uh, 28 dBm and at the maximum. And I, I did a sweep of the uh, frequency from 750 megahertz to 1.25 gigahertz. And what this shows is that it just shows how much smaller the, the 28 dBm contour becomes when you go from 750 megahertz to uh, 1.25 gigahertz. But you can see that the matching uh, problem becomes more difficult as you go up in frequency. We can also do a, a load harmonic phase sweep. This is the, a, a sweep of the second harmonic phase <coughs> uh, for a high reflection coefficient. And this is a, a method of seeing how much the reflection coefficient, say, at the second harmonic affects the overall performance of your PA. And this, is, this shows that there is some variation. The blue is the power delivered. The red is the power added efficiency. Um, and there's a little bit of variation. It, you probably want to avoid about 170 degrees or, or near a short uh, for the, the second harmonic. OK, just to review, I talked about uh, basic load pool concepts and using measured load pool data files uh, to design matching networks. And I, I started with a fast, simple load pool, then added sweeps to see uh, compression and swept frequency and showed uh, a sweep of harmonic reflection coefficient phase. And there are other, certainly other techniques that I, I have not shown. There are, you can run uh, EVM analysis, for example, and you can plot EVM and ACPR from a one-tone swept harmonic balance load pool simulation. So there are a, a lot of capabilities for load pool analysis. And if you have questions, uh, pl please feel free to contact me or, or see us in, in the booth, and I'll, I'll give you a demonstration. Okay, thank you.